Hey everyone, welcome to Princess of Gay, I'm your host Connie, and today we will be reacting to episodes 3 and 4 of Big City Greens. So yeah, like I said last time, um, the way they're sorted out on the side I get them from, they're just sorted out two episodes each, but each episode is half length, so it doesn't really uh, cause any issues there. Um, it, it's, it's Two of episodes are normal length of one, so... I, I don't get why some series do it this way, and then some series it's like, oh, it's the full episode, but this is episodes like 2A and 2B, and it's like, but then some episodes are just like, no, this is episode 3 and 4, and it's like, what? <laughs> well, can't you just like come to some kind of standard consensus on that? I don't know if it's a decision they make to like, um try to say they have more episodes and everything but it just seems and maybe, maybe it's also dependent more on like the the tone of the show and all determining like how the feel of the show is supposed to go if it's more episodic and goofy or if it's more serious and story driven i don't know but either way that's just how this series is so so, last time, we got introduced to our family here. Um, they apparently seemingly moved from um, the southern countryside, I guess, to, um, to the big city. And now they're just trying to kind of get acclimated to it. They're trying to figure out their footing, um, make a good first impression, make friends, and enjoy steak night. Uh, well, some of them are trying to enjoy steak night. Others are wanting their steak cooked well done. And that's a travesty, so. <laughs> um, I, I want to make clear, I don't care how you cook your steak. I, I, this is like a little uh, string of comments and stuff from last time. <laughs> I don't actually care. Like, I don't like well done steak. I think it's gross. I think it's rubbery and tasteless. But, yeah, I prefer medium rare. Medium, I can handle as well. But medium rare is definitely the best cook. Has the most flavor, the most juiciness. It's just the best in my opinion. And, and it seems to be like the popular opinion too, which is weird because I don't usually have popular opinions. I, I, I usually go against those. <laughs> um, but that is the most uh, commonly decided perfect cook for a steak um so there's that but yeah if you like your steak well done i don't care i i really don't it, it like that's you're up to your tastes and all um so so when i say stuff like that in, in a reaction and all it's like just just know that i'm just like talking from my perspective and all don't, don't try to, like, take it as, like, I'm making fun of you or attacking you if you like it any differently. I just, I want to make sure everybody understands that. Um, so, yeah, we, we, we kind of just got introduced to everything. And that's kind of what you expect from a first uh, episode, or I guess first two episodes. <laughs> um, we got introduced to... The, we have a single father raising two kids um, and also living with the grandmother, who I presume is the father's mother. Ah! Ooh. Okay. I think I'm good. Sorry about that. I presume she's the father's mother, but she I guess she could be his mother-in-law. It's possible. Um, we just don't know at this point. And we don't know what happened to their mother either. I assume that will be revealed at some point. Um, but we have our main, our, our main main character, Cricket. I think his name is. Um, he's precocious. He's he's very nice. He's a good he's a good kid. But he he just doesn't understand boundaries and shit. Or he he's a li he's a little too excitable and. and loves trying out new things and even when he's not good at it and, and especially when it's something that's uh just ridiculous 
Um, and there's nothing wrong with a kid being ridiculous. Like, that's just being a kid. But the shit he's trying to do, it's like launch a chicken into space and then causing car accidents and all this shit. It's like, Jesus, kid. Um, they, they made one friend who was voiced by Zeno Robinson. I can't remember his name. Um, but, uh, he, he's basically just Irwin from Billy and Mandy, so I'm just gonna call him Irwin. Um, he's... Yeah, very basic character so far. Probably one of the weaker ones for me. The grandmother's interesting, though, because she has a fake leg, which was made very apparent very quickly in a kind of a shocking, surprising moment that they would do something like that. But um, she also has some weaponry and shits in her room, and it's like, okay, this lady's crazy. Um, but at least she likes her steak cooked medium rare. <laughs> Um, but in all seriousness, um, the father seems like he's a, he's a fun dude, um, but is also trying to, you know, keep things together. He's not too fun-loving to where he's irresponsible. Um, he, he shows that responsibility with his kids. He knows how to handle them. And, yeah, I mean, fair enough. <laughs> uh, we get to see a little bit of, uh, Gloria. In the first episode there, she uh, is shown getting irritated with Cricket's antics, uh, bringing him to his father and everything, and, you know, showing some of that anxiety we saw from that music video with Libby and Candace and them. Um, Marcy. I don't know why the fuck her name was escaping me there. Um, but yeah, with them. And, yeah, I'm very much interested to see more of her, especially realizing that she's voiced by the same VA as Sasha, Anna Akana. I, I, I think it's Anna Akana. I, I keep, like, messing up the pronunciation, because I want to I want to say her first name is Anna, but then I want to rhyme the second name, but I think the se her, her last name is pronounced Akana. And it's like, it, it throws me off every single time. I think it's supposed to, to, to rhyme, though. I think it's supposed to be Ana Akana. I'm not 100% on that. I, I might be entirely wrong. I apologize if I am, but... <laughs> Either way. Uh, yeah, find out she voices her, and so that's that's pretty fun. Um, but I, I, I'm very interested to see more of her because she's the most interesting character to me and not just because of that video but to be fair that video was the reason i wanted to check out this series so um there is partly uh the video to blame there but also she just seems the most interesting to me so far um it seems like she has the most potential for story and character and depth based on what we got in the first two episodes. Not that the others don't. There's definitely room for plenty of stuff with them. But I'm just saying, like, I see a lot of potential in her character. Uh, and that's not even just because she's voiced by Ana Akana either. <laughs> um, I'm not letting my Sasha bias control me here, okay? <laughs> um... But seriously, yeah, it, I, I actually really enjoyed the first two episodes. They were funny, they were interesting, there was a certain charm to them. And you all thought I wouldn't. Yeah, I saw those comments in the Discord. And um, I, I, I mentioned that in, I think, the flavor text in the last, um, the, the, the first episode, the first two episode reaction. <laughs> um... But yeah, it's like, you all were saying like in the Discord, it's like, oh, I don't think Connie's going to like this it, it, and everything. It's more slice of life -y or whatnot. Um, and it's like, okay, well now I'm going to like it just to spite you because <laughs> I'm a bitch like that. <laughs> no, but I, I liked it. <laughs> like, w what else am I supposed to say? Like, you just, you kind of did just assume. <laughs> I'm not against the series just because it's episodic and less story-oriented. Also, by the way, that is very much a spoiler. 
Uh, but that's not a huge spoiler. I, I honestly expected it. Um, but yeah, I, I'm not upset about that. The point is, it's like I'm not against episodic stuff. I've, I've seen plenty of episodic shows I like. It's just I do prefer more story-oriented story stuff. Because I feel like it, it delivers on build-up each week. Well, with, a, with an episodic show, it's just something completely different every week. Like, even something like Total Drama is not episodic at all. It's an ongoing narrative. And, and so it, like, it, it rewards you for paying attention each time. While with a lot of episodic stuff, it's like... Even the ones with uh, notable continuity... A lot of the time, it just doesn't reward you in the same way. But that doesn't mean it's not good. I mean, My Little Pony is episodic, and I love My Little Pony. You guys know that. Um, both G4 and G5. And yes, there's ongoing storylines that are introduced in them. But overall, they're still episodic. Most of the episodes of each season are still, you know, like their own thing there's just like ongoing plot points that follow through them um and, and other episodic shows have really I, i've really enjoyed as well like the ghost of molly mcgee i love the shit out of that show and it's episodic so i'm, I'm not really worried about that here i i'm judging I'm, I'm judging the show based on its own merits based on what it provides in terms of entertainment for me so I, I don't mind that it's episodic. I, I just care if it's good. Again, to my opinion, mind you, but still. Um, so hopefully it continues to be good because the first two episodes definitely were. But I don't know what to expect. Um, I, I don't know what to expect going into this. I, I, I'm not expecting it to be like Owl House or Amphibia or anything like that, but if it does reach to that kind of degree, I, I'd be, I'd be good with that. Um, but we'll see, we'll see. Either way, we're just gonna get this going and hope for the best. So when the screen fades to black, pause this redirect and go to the description below. Follow the link to the reaction, and after you watch, come back here to the redirect and resume play. Because after it fades to black and it fades back in, everything from that point forward will be my afterthoughts and will contain spoilers to the episode. So, with that being said, thank you so much for tuning in, and I will see you at the reaction. And we are back, and we'll begin with spoilers in 3, 2, 1, now. So, uh, this was, once again, pretty damn enjoyable, pretty fun. Um, it, 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 there's a lot of dumb humor in this, there's a lot of ridiculous shit. And, and even some things that are just like, okay, I've seen this done before. Um, but it, it, it's it's charming in a way that makes it stand out. And I can appreciate that, honestly. Um, so, our first uh, episode here focused on the Green family name. And a ritual that they have had for presumably as long as they can remember, where once you come to a certain point in your life, you have to uh, wrestle and pin a wild animal in order to remain a part of the family, basically. It's so fucking stupid. And, and it, the thing is, it's obviously a joke to like kind of make fun of the idea of outdated, um, how do I put it? Outdated family traditions and everything, um, to where it's like, oh yeah, like, this is clearly a relic from the past. It's not relevant to today, but there are still some people who insist upon it and think that it still needs to be done because tradition. And yeah, it even kind of like plays up to the point where it's like, this is stupid. 
I know I'm a green inside. I, I don't need any stupid tradition to tell me one way or the other. But then he ends up uh, using that as a distraction to be able to take her down anyway, which I thought was pretty funny and clever. Um, and and it, doesn't, it doesn't even hurt the message, I think. Um, I, I don't feel like it hurts the message to have him take advantage of the situation just because I feel like he did it just to make her happy just to just to be able to impress her his grandmother I mean um so so I can appreciate that without feeling that it ruins the message of it I, I feel like I feel like if he hadn't learned the lesson beforehand and uh, someone else tried to teach it to him but he just refused or something it would have been worse but I don't know I, I don't think it hurts the lesson because it's, it's, it's clearly he, he clearly still understood it so yeah plus the episode actually uh, hinted at something. They mentioned um, Cricket and Tilly's mother and her being on the quilt and everything. And we didn't get any more information. We didn't like find out like like why she's not around anymore. But that's really interesting that they even dropped a little bit of a breadcrumb there. I, I'm genuinely wondering how long it's going to take to actually truly touch on that. Obviously, do not tell me in the comments below. But um, I, I am curious. Because that feels like that's a big deal that they're going to work up to. And I'm interested. Uh, we, we also got to see um, just some shenanigans with Cricket going around the city, even at the park and everything, trying to find a wild animal. But it's like the quill, it's like had this one family member, like with a spider in a jar. It's like, I think the squirrel would have fucking counted. The, the squirrel would be harder to pin down than a fucking spider in a jar. Like, come on. I, I think the grandmother was just being a dick there. To be honest, which is kind of within her character. Um, but then we had the second episode. And this one was, like, ridiculous, obviously. But in a fun way. So, upon hearing about this food truck rally that's coming to, coming to the city, uh, Cricket gives his father the idea to turn their truck into a food truck and sell french fries using the food from their garden, the potatoes from their garden. And then his father actually thinks it's a great idea. And honestly, it it kind of is. <laughs> Obviously, there's the really dangerous way that they're making the fries and everything, like with the uncovered back of the pickup and everything. It's like, like even Cricket points that out and it's like, yeah, he's right. I mean, the curse thing's a little much, but he is right that that's fucking dangerous. Um, but it ends up working out in the end, so. But, so, as they're picking the, uh, uh, pulling up the potatoes to uh, make the fries at the food truck rally, uh, they end up pulling up a blue potato. Uh, Grandma mentions that it is a cursed potato, that, that blue potatoes bring a curse to the family, and that she knows how to take care of it, but needs certain things to do so with. Uh, meanwhile, they head to the food truck rally, and all this seemingly terrible stuff begins happening. Just all this stuff that Cricket lines up to be from the curse. And at first his father doesn't believe him, but once things start stacking up, he starts to, after all. Tilly has to be the voice of reason here, um, and basically reveals to Cricket that everything that happened was literally his fault. Because of his paranoia over the curse, 
he brought on the actual, like, symptoms, I guess you'd say, of the curse itself. Everything that happened was because of him. And I, it, I, I've seen this kind of thing before, where it's like the characters in something, a, a movie, a show, etc., a game, are so paranoid over something that they end up causing their own downfall. That, that the thing that they were so worried about is only only happens because of them being worried about it in the first place, a self-fulfilling prophecy in a way. And so, yeah, that's the only reason why any of that happened. The funny thing is there was actually, like, when they were out of the truck and everything and there was just the potatoes and stuff in it, the truck ended up, like, flying through, like, all this stuff, like, a new, got a new sign got cleaned up and everything and started looking amazing and it's like even got new appliances and shit and it's like okay it seems like the potato is actually positively lucky because <laughs> look you, you're taken out of the equation you who had been causing all this trouble and look how perfect everything is ends up going down they get to the food truck rally perfectly on time Everybody is excited about their fries. It's like what it, it, all the bad luck was just cricket being paranoid, and, and I, I think it was a fun way to handle it. Um, and the blue fries, uh, the lucky blue fries, selling really well, and everything at the end as well was great. Um, it, it it was just fun. It was entertaining and fun. Um, so yeah. I, I, I had a good time with these episodes, and I'm d definitely curious to see where they're going to go. Also, I love the fact that Gloria just has a spray bottle just ready for when he uh, Cricket eventually comes to the coffee shop. Also, why was that dude wearing, like, those big furry slipper uh, things? Like, just Why? Um, I mean, my dude, wear what you want. I mean, they're glorious, but why? <laughs> it didn't match anything else he was wearing, so it's like, I, I'm just wondering, like, what the point of it was. Just comfort? Just, you like the aesthetic? Again, nothing wrong with it either way. I'm just curious. Um, but yeah, so... I, I enjoyed this episode just just as much as the first, or these episodes just as much as the first two. Uh, but let me know in the comments below, what did you think of episodes three and four of Big City Greens? And for now, I'm Connie and I'm signing off. See y'all next time.